Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Unity of Command 2, Moscow 41, the newest DLC out for Unity of Command 2, which allows you to play through the Soviet winter counteroffensives of 1941 and I think into early 1942. Uh, this, it's been a little while since we've played this, this game, um, but I did want to return to it. You know, I got sidetracked, there's always a lot of stuff coming out and stuff to play, uh, and then obviously with a newborn, uh, life has been a little bit chaotic lately. Uh, but I did want to return to this game and, you know, I was kind of looking around and seeing what, what I would play today. And uh, someone commented on one of the old videos asking where this series went. And uh, I decided, hey, why not give it, a, give it a little bit of play? I am going to try and live stream today, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, on my Twitch channel, probably around 8.30, maybe 8 o'clock Central Standard Time. Could be a little bit earlier. A lot depends on when her daughter goes to bed. But I am going to try and live stream uh, the demo, The Troop, if I still have access to it. Uh, it was a demo that came out for the Steam Fest, and it's sort of a real-time uh, World War II combat game. It looks really kind of interesting. I played through the first tutorial mission, and I think it might be fun to play uh, on a live stream. So check me out on Twitch, uh, and maybe, if things work right, we'll get to live stream that today. But in uh, the video for YouTube today, we're going to be looking at Unity of Command 2, which is a turn-based World War II strategy game that is fairly approachable uh, and easy to get into, but often hard to master, depending on the scenario. Uh, we have two options left in this particular part of the campaign. So we are in, I want to say the second conference, but it's been a while since I've played, so I can't quite remember. We fought the, the Tifkin Offensive in the north, uh, we have also fought the Battle of Rostov, or the Rostov Offensive in the south, and the defense of Moscow, and we are now moving on to either the right-wing offensive or the left-wing offensive. Those are our options at this point. I presume these are both going to be much larger scenarios than we've seen so far in the game, and you can see they're both 13-turn scenarios. One of them involves the Western Army and the Kalinin Army, and the other involves the Western Army and the Southwestern Army. We only have 25 prestige to upgrade our forces here, so not a lot of prestige to play with. The Southwestern Army has not been upgraded at all. Uh, the, the Western Army has been upgraded a fair bit. It has access to level 10 range uh, trucks. It has all three tiers of operations unlocked. So if you compare it to the, the Southwestern Force, uh, which only has one level of operations and all the other items unlocked, it's, it's a more modern force. Um, the Kalinin Force has also been modernized slightly. It's got some level 2 stuff, uh, but not a lot of trucks. So, let's see here. What are the two options here? The right-wing offensive, the German onslaught has stalled, and the Wehrmacht ceased to establish defensive positions for the winter. The pause is just what the Soviet forces needed. The winter counteroffensive resumes as the Soviets try for a right hook to swing beyond the German lines around Kalinin. The option in the south is uh, the f uh, finds the 53rd Corps dangerously exposed and assailing east of Tula, front is porous and the open terrain has enabled rapid movement over frozen ground so it's an excellent opportunity not only to push back the Wehrmacht but also possibly encircle and destroy overextended divisions so this battle feels a little bit more open this one probably is a little bit more of a slugfest I'm guessing so why don't we go with the left wing offensive we have a secondary objective to take Sukuninchi okay so let's go ahead and jump in Left wing offensive, Stavka dis dispatch. The enemy is overstretched in the southern part of the sector. In some cases, the front is held by recon elements only. Strike hard and pursue their exhausted forces relentlessly. If they're given space to reestablish a shorter defensive line, your job will be far more difficult. Wow, we had a lot of units destroyed in, in the last battle for these headquarters here. So there are units that have been reconstituted, but they're gonna be under strength and green. So the 17th Rifle Division, the 5th Airborne Corps, 53rd Rifle Division, 1st Guards Motor Rifle Division, 222nd Rifle Division, 60th, 415th, and 93rd Rifle Divisions. You can see here, if we take a look at this map, it is fairly large, not huge, but fairly large. And you can see in the south, the Germans are much more spread out with mostly infantry units, whereas in the north, they're much more consolidated and they've got some key armored units here. We have five objectives to take by turn nine for on time. Uh, Yelitz down here, right on the border. We've got Yefemrov, then we've got Stanonogorsk, Kaluga, 
and Narofominsk. So Narofominsk is right on the front line in the north, but I imagine we're not going to make much progress here in the north against these strong German defenses. Potentially even their armor could be a threat to us here if they do go on the offensive. But in the south, we do have some open terrain. Not a lot of armored units to exploit that though, mostly infantry. We do have a, a lot of reinforcements that are coming online here by turn three. The Germans have one division coming online as reinforcements. So I think the way this game looks is you likely want to push up at Yelitz, follow that rail line up to Efemirov, and then Stalinogorsk. Uh, and presumably that will help cut supplies to these German armored formations here in this bit of a salient. Uh, there's no rail line to the east. And if you can do that, then you can cut the German supply. Another option may be moving west across this rail line and trying to get into the rear to take this depot and cut this rail line, making your job easier to move up from Yelitz to Yefemirov. Um, and then potentially using your armor and motorized troops to push up near Livni to cut the supply lines here. Although trying to push across to this railroad will be difficult uh, because there's no ability to really push our own supplies up that way. I do have some cards for artillery preparation, some air supply and IL-2 bomber support. So that is nice. We only have 25 prestige to strengthen our own troops. And so I guess the question is, what do I want to do there? Uh, presumably maybe improve my one armored unit. Some ski troops, T-26s, some artillery, NKDVD troops. Maybe it would be better to improve some of our infantry instead. Or what about this armored unit? Would be, eh, the T-34s are too expensive. T-26s aren't great. Give some armor to these uh, cavalry units. I don't know if that'll be useful or not. Self-propelled artillery feels like it might be the most useful for these guys, but... I guess maybe just some T-26s. What do ski troops do? Hmm. So 45 millimeters anti-tank. 76s. Divisional gun. Alternatively, we could give some border troops who don't already have artillery access to it. But I think really strengthening the southern troops is probably important. What's our, um... Are we giving these to them? I have no idea who I have selected right now. 108th. Which is where? here okay probably would have rather given these guys reinforcements but they have a different headquarters anyway what's the uh, supply no reserves for that headquarter the western hq does have some infantry and armor to deploy it does reduce experience when you deploy troops with extra steps but not a terrible idea depending on the experience level of some of these units. Some of these guys are like right at 200, which would mean they'd no longer be veterans. But the guys who are regular troops, I don't think there's any arms. They're still going to be regulars, and they're not going to lose any experience, and we can strengthen these guys up a little bit. So we're really strengthening our position near Tula. Should probably also strengthen some of these troops up here. These are airborne cores are out of reach of the headquarters. Okay. Yeah, a lot of these newly reformed units are just regulars, which isn't great, but it does give me the opportunity to freely improve their quality. So hopefully that helps them fight better. Yeah, I think a lot of these units had been previously destroyed. Okay. We are vulnerable up here near Narofominsk. Wondering if it's worth moving that headquarters a little bit west. So right now 
these guys are all in command. I just move them one hex. Okay. That's good there. And I can get some more of these troops upgraded in their size. And I think that probably uses all my infantry. Yep. Maybe we move. Eh, I already used up my command points, didn't I? Okay. What about in the south? The southwestern headquarters. Do they have any reserves? Okay, so that leaves us 25 prestige to upgrade, and I guess we'll just give one of these units here. No one's adjacent to tanks. We could just give these guys more armor. That's probably the better route to go. Give them a fifth step of armor. And we'll end the deployment phase. Oh, wait. Supplies. These guys are out. Okay, so let's do that. And then we'll end the deployment now. Do we get to go first? I assume we do since we're on the offensive. Yep. So do we do artillery preparation? Suppressive fire doesn't spend AP for one turn. Probably a good turn to use it on, right? These guys have it, right? 76 millimeter divisional gun. Yeah, so we'll use this. We'll bombard beats. There's obviously the risk that we turn it into a city of rubble. But now that we've bombarded it twice, we can go ahead and assault it. I think we're... Do we want to bombard it a third time? Or do we just want to attack and take the casualties? Let's advance these troops up who don't have support elements. They can launch that initial attack. Drives the enemy back. Go ahead and try and overrun this enemy unit. Defeated those guys. Now we can move up through elites with the infantry. We took that first objective. Let's see if the bastards counterattack. And then I think maybe rather than push up directly on Mephemerov, maybe we push west here. taking those casualties because that unit is as we we knew there are a hundred experience which basically just makes them green okay so we've taken Livni we weren't able to quite get across the bridge here but we did destroy this German unit south near Livni and then that a lot should allow us to push north along this rail line here Question is, what do we want to do with our armor now? Uh, undo that move. Also, what's the supply situation? These guys almost all have supply. So we've got this German unit in the south, which is a veteran unit. We attacked and our engineers are killed. That sucks. Alright, we'll 
push west along this rail line. Should secure this bridge over here as well for us. These German troops, meanwhile, are surrounded. They have to attack through these guys, and they're suppressed. So I'm assuming they won't do a good job of that. Two, nice result there. Let's see if we can't clear these guys off this roadway here, or this railroad here. Prisoners try and finish off the division, didn't quite get to them. Okay, so I think Yelates is secure with these two divisions blocking any German move there. Moving west along the railway here to threaten potentially the rear near Panzer Group 2's headquarter, or maybe make a move to flank Yefemerov. Meanwhile, advancing on Yefemerov directly. And we'll advance across this river here. Gain a foothold. We'll see what this German armor does against us in the open. Can we move for this depot? No. Right, let's bombard these guys. Oh, we get to bombard multiple times with no AP set? I thought it was just the first bombardment. Huh. Alright. Well, that was a good result. We destroyed that German mechanized force. Also, by moving across the river near Stalinogorsk, we are threatening to cut the rail line south toward Yefemerov. So I assume they may push back and counterattack us there, because that's obviously a vulnerable point for them. Okay. Guys have 45 millimeter anti tank guns. Um, since we have this artillery perk that we've unlocked, so that was no AP spent. that German division and gain a bridgehead over here. Not that I'm really looking to push in toward Kaluga from the north, but it might, it might trigger a response. It'd be nice to have some artillery here to counter these German troops. Or even just be dig in here. Okay. Really don't know what to expect from the Germans this turn. I don't know how aggressive they will be. Um, let's move our headquarters forward a little bit.
I don't have any points to dig these guys in. So hopefully they don't come after me. Um, do we have any reinforcements this turn? Not until turn two. I don't have any air power. I can bring an IL-2 bomber online this turn, though. So we could use that to maybe weaken their armor. And it did nothing. Great. Well, we'll hold off the other cards for the next battle, if you will, in the campaign. And let's move forward to turn number two and see what the Germans do. I don't think there's anything else I can really do at the moment. And so the German armor did move away from their front line to counterattack us sort of in the center there. The mechanized troops making a drive there as well toward Zahn. So they're getting, they're having a lot of success driving some of our infantry units back there with a couple of overruns and taking some prisoners. Strong counterattack to the northeast of Stalinogorsk. Drawing some of the troops that participated in that attack. So it looks like it might have been a, re a localized counterattack. And they're pulling some of their troops out of the front line near Nor Naro Fominsk. A lot of redeployments, a couple of bridges and entrenchments occurring. There's now a fortress at Noro Fominsk. turn two. When do we have to take Norfolk by again? We have till turn nine for that. All right. Okay. So we'll take this rail line here. It'll keep our troops in supply. begin the encirclement of Euphemrov. I think we've cut Euphemrov off at this point from supply, but it does take a while for units to starve out. We probably do want to deploy some of our depots a little bit further forward. Try and reduce some of these guys. Finish him off. Okay, so we did capture some prisoners of war here. Okay. There's an enemy infantry unit here along this rail line. try and move in and cut this German formation off here, but I don't think we have the strength to reduce it. Okay. I will take one to one. You know, the interesting thing in playing this game is playing as the Soviets, I will take one to one odds pretty much all day long which is something I would basically never do when playing as the Germans the risk reward of playing as the Soviets is very different than playing as the Germans in this which is probably appropriate and I think I've, I've said previously as well. well presumably there's troops at Kaluga Let's try and bomb these German troops. There you go. I mean, zero to two against German armor. I will take that every day of the week and twice on Sundays. All right, let's move these troops out of Tula to finish off this armored unit. Get the overrun. Nice. Okay. Try and 
extender. Well, is there anybody who has any specialty perks that I should be using down here? Two to one. Yeah, we get three support. We did lose one casualty, but three support damage, and then that gives us the ability to badly maul these guys down here. We didn't quite destroy them, but we did badly maul that armored unit there. I think they're down to one hit point. Okay, are they going to get supply back? Maybe not. Close that. Alright, I just have to keep them away from my depots. Finish. I can't take those prisoners. Damn. All right, so we've now got this infantry here cut off as well as the armor. Yeah, let's just kind of keep trying to unbuckle their line. troops to push in there? I don't. Okay, so we're making a drive on Kaluga. You can see there we've got a spearhead. We did just cripple one German division and we have a spearhead moving this other direction. some artillery up on Norfolk, but I have a while to take that. Move this cavalry in here to try and get some supply. Should. So we're going to move this cavalry to the west, again trying to move in to cut the rail line to the east. If we cut this rail line here, I think there's no supply getting into Stolodogorsk. Might already not be. I, don't, I think with taking this town to the south of Tula, they have no rail line east here. They could put a depot over here to push it through. Not really any movement in the north. surrounded Yefemrov. We've got pioneers there as well. So we'll move them adjacent to Yefemirov. HQ, get moving a little bit. We're here to support the advance. Can we drive west here and just cut the line? It's a little bit of a risk, but we have cut the rail line here now. So I think the only other rail line they might have is coming in at Suk Suknuchi to the west of Kal Kagula or Kaluga. I don't know how to pronounce that. All right, meanwhile, I think we have some reinforcements coming online here. We've got a motor rifle brigade. So we'll swing down north. 
to support the drive on Stalinogorsk. Some of these German units will be without supply for two turns now. And I think I'll do an airdrop card. I know I'm probably using too many of my cards in this battle, but... off that division. Nice. Okay, so we finished off another German armored division. That is definitely an accomplishment. They've got the third panzer and the 18th panzer that we've identified that are still left. And I think they get one reinforcement in infantry division this turn. But that'll do it for turn number two. Let's move to turn number three. here and it got an overrun so if they want they can attack again an air attack on my armored spearhead inflicts three casualties they're going to try and move some troops it looks like out of Stalinogorsk salient they're doing some, they're entrenching some of their troops in the north there and adjusting their depot here which has been cut from its supply lines we didn't lose any units killed this turn Our uh, southwest headquarters. It's got all seven command points. Okay, good. So we're gonna bombard Defenro, if, if or however you pronounce that. Here. Okay, our engineers are suppressed, but not killed. And. is taken. Okay, so we've taken another objective here. I think on time as well. Next one is Stalinogorsk by turn 10, by turn 6, and given the fact that we've cut their supply lines for two turns now, that seems feasible. We're trying to get these guys more to supply, and we do. So these should have rails. They do, and the enemy wasn't able to blow the bridges there. So this entire group is now surrounded. west here. I'm going to need to update some of my logistics. Move some of my depots forward. Firming up this pocket over here, but a lot of these units are going to be out of supply. Mostly just for the first turn, though. So that wide swing west... Keep that drive going toward 
Beluga. We could cut the rail line here, which presumably will cut the supplies to everybody in the north here. Couldn't quite get there, unfortunately, because of the zones of control of this enemy unit. These guys are going to be completely out of supply next turn, the armor, so probably not worth hitting them. But this armor unit there might be a bit of a pain in our ass. some of my formations here. Some of my depots. Let's take a look. Two trucks back there where we've had the biggest advance in the south. depot back. These guys are going to get hit with more supply issues, but the Germans they're surrounding are, are in worse shape supply-wise. I don't think they'll be able to attack out. I think if we just move one more hex west, we can cut Norofomensk off of supply by turn 7 completely. Stalinogorsk probably falls next turn also, unless they can find a way to bring supplies in. Alright, and that's going to do it for today's episode of Unity of Command 2, Moscow 41, the newest DLC out for Unity of Command 2, a turn-based sort of approachable entry-level type war game which looks at Germany's uh, defense against the Soviet counteroffensive, you playing as the Soviets during the 1941 winter. Uh, with that being said, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Leave your thoughts down below, and we will resolve this fight in our next episode. Until then, this is the Historical Gamer once again saying thank you very much for watching, and I'm out. <laughs>